my surprise. I hear there's quite a lot of demand for me to review Digimon Season 5, also known as Digimon Data Squad. This is my personal favorite season. I would say Season 1 as well, but I feel there is a small level of nostalgia that may be blinding me there. This I only ever just saw for the first time maybe five years ago, something like that. So this is all on its own merit. What is it that I loved about this season that none of the others could do? Well, probably the first thing is the main villain, Karada. This is just a villain that I genuinely hated. And that is just not something that I have seen done in any other season. In fact, there's very few shows that I have seen where you genuinely hate the villain. And you should. He's evil. He wants to destroy the world. He wants world domination. Yada, yada, yada. That's kind of the interesting thing about Karada. Is his motivation seems about as stereotypical as you can get. The idea that he wants to rule both the digital world and the real world. But how he does it... <laughs> it's just downright sadistic. <laughs> Basically, he harvests Digimon, takes their DNA, to then make, I believe they were called Gizumon, which basically have no heart, no soul, and no free will. All they just do is kill. And I mean kill Digimon. In fact, that's kind of another thing. In certain seasons, you'll notice that sometimes the Digimon come back once they have been brutally damaged, or what seems to be killed. When the Gizumon started going around, they no longer turned into Digi-eggs, but just straight up disappeared. In fact, what makes it even more heartbreaking is that one of the later entries to come into the Data Squad, his adopted mother was murdered by one of these. Now I say adopted because, well that's kind of a fun story there actually. So, I'm trying to remember what the kid's name is. I'm really drawing a blank here. It's not coming to me. But essentially, his, this kid's parents were researchers into the digital world. They were trying to create some sort of portal, I believe. Yeah, it's coming back to me now. The main reason that the Data Squad was formed, this will tie together eventually, is because... During the early years, back when the head of the Data Squad, Samson, was maybe like in his 20s, he's like maybe in his 30s, maybe 40s by the end of it. But at that time, Digimon were showing up and taking children away. So as a way to try to rectify this, this kid's parents were trying to create a portal to bring all these humans back into the real world. Unfortunately, the experiment backfired. The kid was sent into the digital world, but not the parents. And so, they had to wait a good 10 years before they'd ever see him again. And this is just one of the things that can only happen in anime. When some of the squad members are able to see this kid's parents, I love how they mention, oh, you have your mother's eyes and your hair. She has blue hair and blonde eyes. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a pretty unique feature, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's one aspect. I'm trying to think about what else is pretty good about it. For the first few episodes, I like the idea that it's kind of a mystery, so to speak. It's the idea of, okay, why are all these Digimon coming here? What does this organization intend to do with all these Digimon? And there's several other mysteries. Who is this mysterious old man that wants to help our main protagonist? But it's the story of the other squad members, so on and so on. This is one of the reasons I like to watch the season before I describe it. Because I'm really drawing a blank as to what else to talk about. Well, maybe let me just kind of talk about the other characters right on the cover. Okay, so Marcus here in the middle. 
essentially he wants to be the fighting king. Basically beats up anybody that looks at him funny. And he never wants to back down from a fight. That is how he met his partner, Agumon. It's kind of fun how they show this, actually. But we just kind of open with the idea that a rogue Digimon went up and beat up a whole bunch of people. You see, like, 50 people knocked out in front of this park. When you see the Digimon is about to attack Marcus. But the fun thing is... It was actually Marcus that knocked out all those people. And then Algumon wanted to fight him. So right off the bat, there's a bit of an understanding there that both of them want to be the ultimate fighters. And both have a mutual respect. Because after that particular fight, both are pretty much matched blow for blow. And they're just knocked out cold. But the only problem is... He is what's known as a rogue Digimon, which means that the Data Squad has to send him back to the digital world. So Marcus essentially smuggles him around as well as he can, until it gets to a point where there's an understanding that if you want to keep Agumon, then you have to join the Data Squad. And then over here we have Yoshi. I still find that a rather interesting name. I mean, usually whenever I hear the name Yoshi, everybody probably thinks of the Yoshisaurus. Or maybe if you're a Soul Calibur fan, you think of Yoshimitsu. So it's just kind of interesting to hear this name given to a girl. Or because I'm a little more sensitive about gender identity, someone with a more female persona. <laughs> Essentially... I don't really give her too much of a story, in all honesty. I mean, yeah, she joined the Data Squad with her Digimon, Lalamon, I believe. The only thing they really give about her is, uh... Well, I'll come back to that later. That's kind of a story development. And it would make more sense if I explained this other kid over here. Thomas. He is the youngest of the group, but he is a super genius. Marcus is rather jealous of him because he always comes up with a plan. And Marcus likes to charge in head first and do things his own way. While Thomas over here is all about sizing up your opponent before jumping in. And sometimes often lets the enemy get away in order for it to make sense. Then we have his partner here, Galmon. Now the relationship between Galmon and Thomas... Is more of that of a blindly loyal servant to Thomas's demands. He basically just goes along with whatever Thomas says. You can kind of tell there's a little bit of a friendship there, but for the most part, it's all a working relationship. Now, when it comes to Agumon and Marcus, because Marcus beat Agumon in the fight, he often refers to him as the boss. But after a little while into the show, they are then treated as equals. When it comes to Lalaman and Yoshi, they almost seem more like sorority sisters in all honesty. They just seem like really good friends, even though one's a Digimon and one's a human. They both just hit it off really well and they just work together. Well anyway, the one thing I reveal about Yoshi here. There's a scene where they have to go into the digital world to try to straighten up a few things. And there, they meet Reapmon, I believe his name is, who basically locks all three of them to experience their worst nightmares. Which, for some of them, is kind of ridiculous. So, the one thing we learn about Yoshi is that uh, her biggest fear is that uh, she failed at a piano recital when she was like eight and Lalamon came in and saved the day <laughs> which is just pales in comparison to Thomas which basically he had to relive seeing his mother die when she tragically got ran over by a car and then Marcus's I'm trying to think I want to say his worst fear is when his dad left I feel like if I kind of say much more than that, I'm going to get into major spoiler territory.
but let me just say that I don't understand the hate with this one. Yeah, I mean, it's not season three, but I don't know. I feel like this kind of has an edge to it, kind of like season three does. But more like in the idea of how Nirvana had an edge or Sonic the Hedgehog had an edge. It's not a taste that is to everybody's palate. But it's something that I rather like. There's something a little more grown up about this particular series. And I think maybe the main thing is because the main cast are all teenagers. As opposed to... Hmm, I'm going to guess the oldest one was maybe 12 in season one. Maybe Joe was like 14. I'm not entirely sure what everybody's age was. But I'm pretty sure that everybody in season two was not really that old. Season three, obviously, everybody was probably like 10, 12, maybe. And then season four is probably about the same ages. But also the thing I like is not because the characters are older, but there are a lot of mature things brought up in this season. One that kind of sticks with me is that Karada has these henchmen, which are trying to go after the Digidestin, trying to stop him from taking over the world. They are about to kill him. Yoshi and Lalamon, well, at that point she can digivolve to Rosemon, which, uh... <laughs> Has a rather beautiful design. <laughs> they are about to kill this henchman when all of a sudden his wallet falls open and we see that he is the oldest son of 12 kids. It's just kind of mind-boggling. You don't really hear about henchmen like that being a good guy. I mean, sure, he's doing bad stuff, but the only reason he's doing this is to help his family, <laughs> kind of creating this sort of gray line, which is just something I haven't seen in a lot of shows like this. I think that's about it. Uh, <laughs> I know I missed out a lot because, well, there's probably, I mean, I know I probably, I glanced over a lot. I mean, according to the back of the box here, <laughs> it runs for about 18 hours and seven minutes. <laughs> So you can bet that there's a lot of story here. But I feel like that's something to kind of give you a taste. Something for you to help pursue it on your own. And to see if it's something that you would actually like. And I didn't want to spoil too much because... In all honesty, when I went into this season, I knew nothing about it. When it came to season one, I knew I watched it a little bit when I was a kid. And I wanted to see if I remembered any of it. I did not. Season 2, very similar boat, but much less watch time. Season 3, I just knew was the best. <laughs> Season 4, I kind of just knew for the concept. It was the idea that the kids became the Digimon. But as I probably said in my last review, I feel like Season 4 could have been executed better. Not only with that last arc basically going on forever... But the powers that the kids had, I was honestly kind of hoping they would just kind of black out and then wake up as the Digimon and have to figure out how to fend for themselves in this new body. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. Season 5. If you ever get the chance, I highly recommend it. This is my personal favorite. Until next time, keep having fun.